like the DJ career starting off and everything like what was the hardest beat uh, the hardest beat that you had before like you knew like all the technicalities did you ever have like a problem with beat mixing and everything because the kind of music that you do it's all about like you know beat matching and everything yeah um, well I guess it's also kind of the easiest genre of music to mix because it's all 4x4 four four. Mm -hmm. so in that way um, yeah no the, so the technical aspects I I I actually I, I never followed any classes, so I I um, watch sometimes when I you know I have to, for instance, play with gear that I don't know yet. Yeah. I watch a YouTube video about it, or I I go through the specifications just to be sure I mm -hmm. I find the right buttons. Um, and also when I just started, I watched some YouTube videos. So I'm like YouTube helps me in a lot of things. In everything, I you have all the Google, answers. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. Google and I watch some videos and I read something about it. Um, I uh, also sometimes, of course, I have, I know so many people who are DJs. Mm. I mean, everyone is a DJ, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously sometimes you get tips from friends or you talk about it with other people. Or um, I also just sometimes pay attention when other DJs are playing. Like, oh, what are they doing? Or uh, try things out at home. Mm -hmm. I started with a little controller because I was obviously not sure whether I was gonna. So I didn't want to invest in the. Yeah. Because the DJ heavy equipment ex is super it's expensive. It's super expensive. Exactly. But yeah. then after a while, I realized, like, okay, now I, I'm, this is I'm gonna, gonna go this. a bit more serious. Yeah. So um, I, yeah, I wanted to to have the the gear at home so that mm -hmm. I could practice a bit more. But now that I kind of know <laughs> know how to do it. I yeah. actually don't practice that much anymore at home. Mm -hmm. So you just go and play. No, of course I I, I prepare or just my make sets your set, in, that yeah, right? in that way that I. But that's something you do on your computer. It's yeah, not you do really say, on the you gear. use Serato, right? So, no, or you I'm don't not. use Serato. No, I know that in what? Kenya everyone uses Serato, but I don't use it. No. Okay, tell us I what you use. I just play with the USB sticks and I prepare. Also, oh, you actually beat match the music and just play back to back. Back to back. Like, but do you, uh, you, do you have a software that you don't use? Uh so, I in advance, I yeah. upload all my tracks in Recordbox, which is the the software that comes with the CDJs, basically. It's okay. provided by Pioneer. Yeah. Um, and there you can you can analyze the tracks, you can add comments, for instance, mm -hmm. so that you can remember the, the different tracks. So that's what I do when I prepare. Okay. I first, I for hours and hours, I'm just listening to music online, on SoundCloud and on, on Beatport and just listening to all the new music that came out and I yeah. buy the, the tracks that I like and that I think I'm gonna play. Yeah. And then I upload it in in a record box and that's where you make your playlists. So you can make the playlist on your computer and then you export it to your USB stick and then you plug in the USB stick in the oh, and it has like your tracks and everything. Pioneer CDJs, and you you find your playlist there, and you also have like the search option to type in ah, if you yeah. <laughs> so there are ways to organize your music so that you find it easily, and so that's basically what 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 means preparing myself. You know, I mean, I, I can see your reaction when I asked you like, uh, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I uh, was telling you about, uh, I think you just smiled and laughed when I told you about how a lot of Kenyan DJs use uh, Serato. Everybody's using Serato, yes, right? Did I you notice that? So. <laughs> yeah, th th this is what I hear while I'm here. So it's yeah. apparently very popular here. It is. Um, in, I think in Europe. Back in Belgium or Europe, how is it? I don't know many Serato users. Most of them, if really? they play with a computer, they, they use Traktor. Ah, okay. It's more common to use Traktor, um, mm -hmm. and then they have those. But I the console, I the little console. I just decided to not play with a computer because um, I just feel that uh, there is. I, I, in the very beginning, with my very first controller, it worked with a computer, mm -hmm. and I just noticed that um, I'm. You kind Focus of focus on the, the you miss you the look moment. At the, you yeah, look yeah. At the screen, yeah. and I want to look at the audience, mm. so. A lot of DJs don't. I mean, a lot of yeah. DJs would rather it's focus on the laptop. Yeah, so I, I, I rather 
have some interaction with my crowd, crowd. interaction is more it important is already at the moment that you're mixing you're already just paying attention to what you're doing mm -hmm. so in between if you have some time i rather you know have some interaction with the audience yeah then 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 looking at the screen i feel that teachers who play with a computer i mean i do see the advantages of playing with a computer yeah i'm not gonna discuss that <laughs> because there are definitely advantages um but yeah it's about i think it takes away the, the fun from from just djing in general because now what you're talking about is actually like you know feeling the beats like that's why like uh like the kind of like even when i see you play you're always like you know because you get to count the beats you get to feel the music rather than when you're using like your laptop it's just like you know you can already see the bpm you can already see like the sound oh, waves matching them you, with all those things you also see them on the cdgs oh yeah okay. the cdgs have a little like the cdgs nowadays are yeah. basically small computers yeah they have also the screen and you see like the, the pioneers like they have like the you leaned up see the the everything the bpm and the wave um form mm. as well Okay. So in that way, yeah, y it is almost the same as a computer, basically. Okay. Nowadays, you can... The, the, the very first CDGs where you literally had to <laughs> put in a CD yeah. and then try to find... Like, there was not the easy way of finding your tracks. And it you wasn't. True. So, yeah, that's that's a different story. Oh, okay. No. The, the, CD, the new CDGs that they They're use now... They're way advanced, right, right? It is almost as... What's, what's your choice of console? What, what's like, you know... Because um, you don't want to go to a gig and then you find like these guys have like a crazy setup that, you know, like what? this? I don't know how to use this gear. What happens when you go to a gig and then mm. they've booked you and then they f you find gear that you don't even know how no, to use? No, that doesn't happen because You get I Technics 1200s there waiting for you? Mm. Yeah, no, so um, <laughs> they always ask in advance, like, what is your technical rider? Yeah. And then they should provide the gear that you that you need. Mm. Um, and the, the gear I need is, I guess, the most common setup. It's Pioneer CDJs with the Pioneer mixer. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, the mixer, I can also use another mixer, Alan and Heath, if I'm comfortable with it as well. Uh, all clubs or events have yeah. that so yeah it's like standard you know yeah especially if you're bringing in guest djs i think it's just like the yeah, safest yeah. way to go right yeah so in that way i don't have that problem mm. that i mean if because if if you play vinyl i it's rather the opposite that if you need the techniques you should request them yeah like the cdgs will be there even if you don't request but True. if you're playing vinyl nowadays you yeah. have to request it but yeah, I decided not to play vinyl because I just don't see myself carrying boxes and <laughs> taking planes with, with my vinyl. And I just, I'm just going you'll for be the paying, practical. You'll be paying for extra luggage. How heavy is like a Technics? Just I one of them. You'll be paying a lot of money just to move around. Yeah, vinyl is heavy and mm -hmm. and also collecting vinyl is, is yeah. kind of more complicated. Yeah. You have, they have to send it. You have, yeah, I mean... Maybe if you're using vinyl, maybe just go with Serato, though, right? There is definitely a charm about vinyl, but yeah, uh, it's, it's just... Yeah, I know. I'm from the digital era, <laughs> so, yeah. I get it. Do you remember your first gig? Did you, Have you, like, you know, just what, what kind of experience do you remember, like, from your first gig? Yeah, so my very first... Um, so I had played a few times like at home with for friends and and yeah. a, a, a birthday party but then the first time that i played at a public event was at kiwi burn mm -hmm. which is a, the regional burning man event of new zealand so i was very far away not and that's not, a big gig not, as well not, right not many people know knew me so ah. <laughs> i was kind of comfortable in that way that it was not so scary yeah um and yeah that i think that was at that point it was so much fun that that was I mm. think at that point I decided that I wanted to start I want to like really this. DJing mm -hmm. and then uh, back in Belgium I had a friend who said who also DJs and he he said yeah th there is this guy who organizes after parties and he wants to book me but he was looking for someone who could fit with the lineup and he knew that I play about the same genre kind of music. because we like the same music yeah so he said you should record a set so i can propose you and then we can both play there mm -hmm. so that was when i recorded my first set mm -hmm. and then um yeah they they booked me and that was really nice it was a really good gig um mm. 
I enjoyed it so much. Um, then they booked me again a month later, and I guess from there it kind of started. The, the you know everything like just started like yeah. going back and forth. Most gigs lead to another gig. Yeah. There's always someone which just you know likes you and then comes to ask yeah. for your contact details, and that's kind of how it started rolling. Okay, when yeah. it comes to just uh, like just that lifestyle that you're already inside it, do you still um, kind of like uh, get anxious like when you're booked for like an event and you know like there's a certain kind of crowd like you know you don't know how they're going to react do you always get anxious before you play or you're always like just good to go like you know eh, I've done this a thousand times i'll still do it yeah no i'm i'm not a very nervous person i i'm quite calm so i no my nerves don't bother me too much a few times when it's a really important and big gig, I am a bit nervous in advance, but mm. usually once I start playing, it's also mm -hmm. over. 